KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good afternoon and welcome to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet and I'm here in the studio with Ron Landis and the late Patty Fink. Our guest is uh, Council Member Adam Medrano. Adam, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Patty, David, LaRon, for inviting me here uh, this afternoon. I'm excited to be here. First time he's done a radio show. Really? I believe I, so. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored <laughs> that we're the first. Yeah, I'm really shocked. <laughs> I, I don't know how many city council people <laughs> over the years this was their first show. So, well, we just had add to um, the list. we just had former council member, Dallas city council member. We should add, mm -hmm. as if you know, like we're the only town in our listening area. <laughs> You know, Dallas City Council member um, Valetta Lil on two okay. weeks ago, and uh, she was fantastic. Friend of mine, of course. You yes. know, it's so much to talk about, and, uh, so we're delighted every time we have a council member on, especially a sitting one. She didn't have to be quite as reserved as Adam has to be. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was telling us several things that he's going to be polite about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has to work with these people. Valetta doesn't care. <laughs> True. <laughs> Very good point. Um, th let's just talk about you were on the school board for seven years. Seven years. President of the school board for three years. Yes, three terms, yeah. Prime Minister of the school board for uh, <laughs> several of those years, too. Um, and, and then you went to the city council. Same, different? Did it prepare you for city council and what city council does, or are I, they I different? I think so. I think, uh, um, of course, different issues. Of course, we're focused on the kids and making sure uh, that they have the best education possible and also supporting the teachers, supporting the principals um, and, and that aspect. But in both, I mean, you're dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And if you, I believe if you, you know, you want to really help people or, or, or um, are working towards treating people right and, and voting for what's what the right thing to do or, um, yeah, I mean. Just so you're saying I'd be to totally me. unqualified for a position like this. <laughs> yes. I, I'll. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> and, and, and you know, different. We're focused on kids and, and, and their schools and stuff. And, and with the city, it can be a broad, you know, a broad range of different issues. I get calls about loose dogs to saving a tree. I saved a tree in Deep Ellum. We can talk about that later. Um, uh, you know, the gastrolling issue that we talked that, mm -hmm. that was uh, there when it, when I first got on council. So there's just different issues. Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, if you're, if you're there for the right reasons and you're trying to work for the community and, and you vote that way, uh, you'll be fine. So who's more difficult to work with, children or the city council? <laughs> you know what? There are different. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I get along with all my colleagues. Yeah, I think I believe on both mm -hmm. both sets. I still have rela great relationship with all the DISD trustees now. Uh, actually. Uh, did a uh, graduation yesterday at Woodrow Wilson, and I'll do another one at Science and Engineering Magnet. Some of the parents in the community asked me to uh, 
hand their diploma to their children. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not there anymore, but I'll try to get on stage. And I, and of course, they allowed me to to to, to go there oh, nice. and to present some of the diplomas to some of the kids. Oh, that's well, that's nice. exciting. But you know, being on the on the school board, I'm and then tr- moving to the city council when they hand you those binders and binders of a budget. That's not new to you, right? That's not new. <laughs> no, it's the same. I think this, the, the art city is a little bit. I think it's double. The city's double. I think um, around there. So double what the school yes. district is. Yes. So wow. in order to bring the school district up to what it needs to be, they should be about equal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not criticizing. Um, but there has been some criticism of DISD. And one of the issues uh, is what they're calling home rule. It's something the mayor proposed, right? It came from the mayor? or N- No, actually not the mayor. It came from, uh, I believe, one of the trustees, Mike Marath, and oh, okay. a group that he... Uh, well, he says he didn't put together, but it put, uh, there's a group of five uh, people, and I'm not going to say they live in the city because some of them do not live in the city of Dallas, that are trying to uh, reform the school district, and they believe that this home rule uh, charter school district would do that. Can uh, the home rule issue actually isn't just something that Dallas is dealing with. This issue is kind of, kind of several cities around the nation. Can you, can, for those who don't know, describe what home rule even means. Well, home rule is to um, what you have to do in order to get a home rule system. And, and right now, we're actually the only ones that have gotten this far because you had to, to get uh, over 25,000 signatures to even. What it does is forces the school board to form a commission to look at if DISD wants to even become a home rule charter or change some of the rules. And I believe it takes some of the, uh, pulls us away from some of the state regulations. And that, and that, so that's pretty. And much you're calling it, it a home rule charter. Would every school in Dallas become a charter school? Um, it's that could happen. I mean, I, I, you know, that's it, it. It just depends on what type of charter they write. The, this this commission oh, um, writes writing a charter, not writing not a charter, not charter. Charter. School, that's okay, what it is. You're writing a charter, okay, just like okay. our city charter that we. And the reason I'm even week. asking these things is I've been reading about the home rule, and I haven't gotten a clear a clear conception of. Okay, what exactly is this? I'm not against it. I, I'll, I'm for anything that'll make the schools better. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you I, are too. But no, I, you know, no, of anything course, that we're passionate make the about better. the schools. Sure. You know, I was there for seven years. Uh, the school board is an easy target. I mean, we all work hard. We all care about the kids, mm-hmm. and uh, we we are trying to 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 give them the best education possible. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning more towards being against home rule, only because they really haven't given us. Um, Anything that that any 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 idea or how charter is going to improve student achievement, and so until they do that, I really can't get behind something that's not. You have Mike Miles here; he's a reform superintendent. When we interviewed him, uh, we knew what we were getting. He was going to kind of rattle the cages, shake up the school district, transform, and he's been doing that. We have a a principal uh, evaluation uh, tool that evaluates principals and last week they passed the teacher evaluation index which I believe I think it's the index that uh, is going to uh, you know hold teachers accountable and uh, um, so th- these are the reforms that he's putting in place and it's good to see that because when I hired him on I, you know I, he was there and then I left for the council but to see this happening exactly what he told us was going to he was going to do is is exciting you know sometimes you hear people say hey I'm going to do this this and this and it doesn't ever happen. You know, of course, they're, they're in the interview process. And so I hope AC Gonzalez is listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you hear this, we're going to change this, this, and this. And he actually has been doing that. Everything he said in that interview, you know, it takes time to get there, but it's, it's, it's being rolled out. So I believe he, you know, he's in the right path of, of, of getting so our schools where they need to be. One of the things that I've heard batted around, because I haven't heard any clear, concrete, okay, if we have home rule, we can do such and such you know and build some great schools here because we'll be doing this particular thing but what I have heard are things like um, oh um, appointed school board how is that better isn't that unaccountable school board well that's one of the things that mm-hmm. can change on the charter is the governance structure and that's not something I support mm-hmm. uh, it can, you know, it can change in different ways. One of them would be that the mayor would uh, appoint the school board members. And to me, I'd rather have, uh, let be able to elect someone in my district that I can hold accountable for my schools and 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 and, 
and call them whenever I need help or you know if there's an appointed board these are uh, that to me they're beholden to the mayor if, if you're appointed by the mayor well I think there's a I, I'm incredibly suspicious of the whole thing because there's a Houston millionaire pouring money into this if this had been um, you know a, several parents gotten together and approached um, authorities and said can we get your support on this and go forward I think it might be an, a really different effort because you know there's been buzz about a White Rock Lake district and, yeah true you know lots of things and and those are really kind of parent driven neighborhood driven things mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I'm a little suspicious of this because we have to remember there's an enormous amount of valuable valuable property owned by the district we're taxed according to the the Dallas I Independent School District I mean property taxes some go to the school district and every Everybody pays. Um, there's something in it for them, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, Patty, you would be against like turning North Dallas High School into condos? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would. Well, also, you know, you got to understand. I was very suspicious as well. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I heard about this issue, it was rolled out in the newspaper, and I saw that the mayor was kind of on board. And then you have these five folks. Who, you know, I'm sure that that they care about our kids and. And some of the, the, the folks on the home rule, I guess, group uh, don't live in Dallas. They might have, you know, grew up here, went to high school here, but you moved away. Mm -hmm. So you don't live in Dallas. You know, you, you, I don't remember you being involved in the community at all. Um, but, you know, what really bothered me was that, you know, seven years on the school board, board president, I'm 50 feet away from the mayor's office. And if this is so great, you didn't, you didn't come over to talk to me, being that the district 70% Latino, you know, 40% of that is limited English, English proficiency. So, just come over. If this is so great, why wouldn't you have done, you know, you were talking and, about and this for months. Board come on over. Of all board all city members. All council members, I was there, you know, and, and he yep. knows how much I care about our kids and, and, and the hard work that we put in right. uh, to, to make sure they have I the mean, best I education I could see him not talking possible. to Scott. Stop. <laughs> huh. but, but you were the board president, right? That's, that's You're uniquely positioned to help carry this if it was going to be something so great. So Who what has, has good come out of it is that you know that was one of the things that I told him when I before I got elected is that I wanted to be his uh, person of education. On you know I have some ideas. I've had I've wanted a joint school board and city council meeting. I've been calling it for five years since I was board president, mm -hmm. and I knew about it because when I was first elected, Laura Miller did it. Mm -hmm. It was the whole entire school district, mm -hmm. I mean school board and city council together. And it was kind of weird for me because I was a city employee. I'm just a little, I was a little peon in the city, you know, city employee, but here I am sitting with these folks to try to discuss what are, what are ways that we can improve our school districts and how we can help each other. So that was Laura Miller. I think she was there for a little while when I got elected and she was gone. I asked Leopard to do it, never, never could get it done. And you know, I, I thought it would be much easier getting, uh, our current mayor on board too you know but I never it never that never happened until now you know we kind of said hey we can't have a home rule charter meeting at the city council without having the school board there there's gonna be so many questions that we're not gonna be able to answer so he did he agreed to do that so we did it wasn't the entire board the board could be there but it was the president and Mike Miles there and out of that he actually named me chair of education for the city of Dallas so that's a good thing and so on the chair we have um, Scott Griggs is the co-chair. Uh, Tendell Atkins is on there. And then the school board appointed Miguel Solis, Lou Blackburn, and Nancy Bingham. So that's our task force. Our first meeting is going to be on Thursday uh, uh, at 3 o'clock. So, you know, in ways that the city can help. At our rec centers, at our, you know, at our libraries, we have some ideas that we, that, you know, how can we help the school district. Who has the final say so on this home rule? The city of Dallas or... Um, the school district or no, a combination it's not, of both. It's, it's, the, it's the school district right now. They're in the process of trying to figure out the process of who's going to be selected to serve on this 15 member charter commission for the home rule. So there's, I believe there's supposed to be nine parents or eight parents of the district and then so many teachers. So they're trying to figure out how they're going to select that. There's applications that have been going out if you want to be on the charter so I know people are, are and they're going to select from that pool but as far as how many Latinos get us you know and you, you go into how many uh, parent Latino parents how many African American parents you know you got to do that they're trying to figure that out now I believe and after that they have so long I think they only have like 30 days to appoint those 15 folks I think it's 15 uh, and so that's what they're in right now the process so they'll write a charter what, what they think what the charter should look like those parents and the teachers are going to write it and then they're trying to get it to the to the vote they have a year to do it but the people that are 
running the Home Rule Charter Group, they mm -hmm. want it to put on the November ballot. So to me, even if this we November? do, yes, Seriously? they're trying to, yeah, they're, it's trying to be rushed. Wow. And so oh, I know that's what they're trying it. to do. So I think we need to give them, if there's a year, they need to take a year or however long it takes to come up because this is a big, you know, this is a big deal. This is going to change our school school district. It's going to rip the rug out from under the school district. So we it want really to would. make sure that that um, you know, if if it's going to be done, is done right mm -hmm. and not rushed. And so, but that's one of the things they want to try to get on the November. That's insane. But th there's also <laughs> a reason why because I believe 25 percent of voters in the city have to vote in that election in order to make it possible so you know you, not that many people are going to vote in may high turnout. you need right, a high turnout right. so in may that won't happen it is so it have to be either this this november or the presidential year that's you know, that unusual year, so yeah that's an unusual requirement for an election yeah yeah I mean, if we had that requirement for city I council we wouldn't have a city council not, you know i believe wow. that's what it is yeah i think it's 25 percent. Uh, okay so here's one of my other questions about it um if DISD doesn't overlay Dallas uh, because like Northeast Dallas is in Richardson uh, Independent School District, Far North Dallas is in Plano, but Segoville's in DISD, Wilmer Hutchins is in, in DISD. So let's say we're appointing board members. Does Wilmer Hutchins get to appoint who's going to be on the DISD board? Well, if, on the charter you mean? Yeah. yeah if you live in DISD boundaries, you're allowed to do that. Yeah. And so that so that's what it is. If you live in the boundaries of DISD. But I'm saying even if this was a power grab by the mayor here, why would anybody in Wilmer Hutchins go for, yeah, we trust the mayor of another city to control what's going on in our district? That's it's a that's, problem. That's yeah, a problem, it's a problem yeah. for there. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. just don't get that one. Um, we, we're going to talk <laughs> about several other things. Uh, the point of bringing you on wasn't just to talk school board. It was to talk current stuff. And uh, there's a, an LGBT task force. You're the um, chair. Uh, the chair of the task force. Uh, and we have other things. A resolution was passed uh, that should make some things better for the LGBT community, especially people who work for the city mm -hmm. uh, have already seen a few of those things. We're going to talk about those in just a few minutes. I'm Dave Taffet. I'm here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and Lauren Landis. Our guest is City Council Member Adam Madrano. We'll be back with more right after this. You are listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. If you're going on summer vacation but aren't planning on taking your old car with you, why not donate it to the KNON Vehicle Donation Program? Just call 877-KNON-AUTO and we'll arrange everything from picking up the vehicle to providing the necessary paperwork. Your donation will help support KNON. 877-KNON-AUTO or on the web at knon.org. Hi, I'm Cleve Jones, and you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON-FM. Yeah. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and Laurent Landis. And Adam Madrano is with us, his first appearance on a radio show. Sure so is. That's so exciting. <laughs> that tradition goes back to Craig McDaniel and Ed Oakley. <laughs> Our show was the first show that either of them w were on. Awesome. Um, th th what is the LGBT task force? You're the chair of it. The task force was around for a couple of years, I guess, before uh, uh, before um, you came onto the council. Patty, you're a member of the mm -hmm. task force. That's one of the I've been from the beginning. Laurent, you don't live in Dallas, so I do stay not. out of this conversation. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but you know, I do, do. I do live in Dallas County. You do live in Dallas County, so this I can join in. Dal This is the city of Dallas Task Force. <laughs> uh, yeah. Irving Garland, where you live, the, they, they don't take part in this. I work in the city of Dallas. You do work in the city so, of Dallas. So I pay city taxes, mm -hmm. no, one way don't. or another. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> what is the task force, Adam? Well, like you said, it was around uh, before I became chair of the task force, and it was actually. Uh, a group of great people. Uh, they were trying to uh, improve the quality of life for and quality of life for LGBT um, the community, and it was chaired by I believe Delia Hasso, and it was kind of not an, an official task force. It was a group of folks that were trying to get things done at the city. Uh, when when I was elected, the mayor called me into his office and said that he 
wanted, uh, besides our committees that we are appointed to, he wanted to have three special task forces. And one of them was domestic violence, which is uh, chaired by Councilmember Gates. And I understand we're against domestic violence, Patty. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, seniors, which is... And uh, we're against seniors, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so seniors is um, chaired by our, our Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, Monica Alonzo. And then he had the LGBT task force. And he wanted me to chair the task force. And right away I told him that, you know, I couldn't do that because it was in his task force to appoint me. I said, there's already a task force, and I believe that they were going to interview candidates uh, or city council members to serve as chair. And I knew that there were several council members that were interested or, or you know, would want to either chair or co-chair. And so when I found this out, I went to the task force and I said, hey, the mayor wants to appoint me as chair of the task force. Would you guys have me? And... Um, I believe all of them said, yeah, we'd love yeah. to have you. And so that's how we, we took care of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was an honor for them to even, you know, because they were in the process of interviewing. And they said, you know what, we'll just stop the interview process and you're going to be our chair if that's, you know. And then also, it's actually one of the mayor's official task forces, which I guess after going through what he did, went through last June with the, ta with the community, he felt that... Uh, um, I don't know if he had to make up or do whatever. You know, he had to I do, think it was. I just thought it was good that he had it because some of the task force members were were were, were kind of worried about, uh, you know, being a mayor's task a mayor's task mean. force, right? What I mean? <laughs> well, but you know what I think he was really doing. I think he was saying, you know what, we really do agree on the issues, but let's work together instead of you being the task force over here and we're city hall over here. Let's just work together on these. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that whole incident at City Hall last year, you were there, Patty. Yeah. But describe what happened. Well, it's, uh, you know, he had gone, this is a, a long simmering thing. Uh, he had gone to the um, National Mayor's Conference where Freedom to Marry had, the organization Freedom to Marry had approached mayors and gotten actually co-chairs, one of which was Anise Parker, mayor of Houston. Um, to enlist mayors of, of cities around the country to sign on to a, a pledge of, of um, you know, supporting marriage equality. Most, and mo which of most mayors did. Right. And, you know, it started out with, you know, just a, a, a few, but then it got up to hundreds and hundreds. And Dallas is the ninth largest city in the country, you know, and he was the only top ten mayor who didn't sign the pledge. And so a lot of people in our community are, have been upset about that and even protested him, kind of dogged him everywhere he goes, you know, to, to get him to sign this thing. And, um, and it kind of went nowhere. But then um, Scott Griggs, council member Scott Griggs, circulated um, a... Um, resolution. Um, it didn't go through committee. It had, had some issues with the way it, it came to the council. Um, and in fact, the mayor, you know, had this whole uh, Schrodinger's dog, or Schrodinger's cat, I should say, um, you know, where the, he was present and absent at the same time. <laughs> and in fact, your aunt, uh, you know, Tia, mm -hmm. Pauline Madrano, who was mayor pro tem at the time, presided over um, a session of the council, you know, stating that it's going to be on the agenda. And it was a whole big mess, and, it, and in fact, it didn't pass, but it was a big embarrassment, I think, for him at the time, that uh, certainly he was not in good graces with the LGBT community at the time anyway. And what's, what's so crazy is if he just signed the pledge, how many years ago now, it would be like page 17 in the voice, and <laughs> it would be over, and nobody would even mention it again, because it would just be so rote. You know, we would have written about it as if what he did was just mainstream. Yeah, and every every big city mayor did it. Instead, we wrote about it as he's the only one who didn't. And I think it was the front page. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. suddenly he's calling attention to himself because he is trying won't, to not to. You know, he won't yeah. you know sign this pledge in support of us, and yet he kept saying he supported us. And so our community has been kind of at odds about well, do you really? Because this was so easy. This was a no-brainer, and mm -hmm. you didn't do it. So how can you say you support us? And so there's been that kind of uh, bunny heads now for a while. But we had the resolution just... Um, and, and I think that, you know, and I fully believe that everything happens for a reason. And I think that really helped the task force. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're kind of his official task force. When I took over, I told these guys, I said, when I do things, I want to make sure we get something done. If I'm going to put my name on it, we're all going to put our name on it. We want to make sure it's going to help people. It's going to, it's going to affect people. So we took the marriage. We saw the marriage train rolling. So we figured we'd take that out of it and work on inequalities within the city. So we then we started focusing on pension, FMLA, 
uh, some of the language um, updates that we need to make to some of the ordinances. Well, before we right. even get to that, you were talking about those things on the task force, but you got a good concrete resolution passed through uh, mm -hmm. through the council. What was that resolution? The resolution that, that we passed was kind of um, uh, directed, I would think, and that's easiest to do, directed the city manager and others uh, to correct inequalities at the city. Like I, like I mentioned, the FMLA. Um, we were going to strengthen the language in our non-discrimination non ordinance. Non-discrimination ordinance. And We've then also, you know, to the real big one, I believe, is the pension. Right. And so what the resolution is, and, and now we were kind of not sure about supporting the, the resolution that, uh, the, the way it passed uh, through council because we wanted to make sure that, that we were doing the right thing. I think that all of us wanted to see things happen. But as you can see, last month mm -hmm. we passed the, uh, the, the FMLA policy that, that now allows uh, um, same-sex partners. Same -sex partners to take off if their partner's sick. You know, before, last okay. month they couldn't. Yep. So that's you know, that's a major win. Mm -hmm. And then also, we have the discussions already going on with the pension board. And so after this, we're gonna go to the police and fire pension because it's separate. And so uh, I believe their meeting's coming up uh, in June uh, So to basically, that. the resolution that passed didn't address one thing. What it said, basically, is wherever there are inequalities, fix them. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Correct. And it's not such an odd thing for Dallas to do that. It's the same sort of thing that was passed years ago that said, basically, let's do something with this all this land, the Trinity River bottoms. A a and it was kind of that same sort of directive. Study it, you know, pass bonds, whatever needs to be done. Uh, to do something with with this land, and and yet that project has a, a bunch of components, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what this resolution does. It has a, a kind of broad stroke topics mm -hmm. that need to be addressed, where we know that there are are discrepancies and and um, inequalities, and so the the city manager is now empowered to do something about mm -hmm. it, and that's what it. And that was a huge win. I know a lot of people said, "Oh, well, this doesn't do anything." Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> we're starting to see. It's already shown that it has. So with yep. the, with certain issues, we also have some others coming up. So like it fixes things over time, not just like immediately, right. like just as you find them. Right. Right. And we already know that there are these, and if others are identified in this process, right. we'll but because I believe the, the MEI um, uh, uh, Municipal Equality Index is also in there. So yep. there's a lot of issues within the MEI that we can that we notice that, that are not. Uh, uh, um, working for us or checked <laughs> off. Yeah, we can check off. We can work on them to get there. And what the MEI is, that's um, the Municipal Equality Index that HRC, Human Rights Campaign in Washington, puts out. It's kind of like their Corporate Equality Index mm -hmm. that says Exxon is the devil and <laughs> other companies are doing these things and some companies are doing some of them, some are doing a lot of them. And some are doing none. Well, that's, right. that's the major example of the one right. doing none. And by the way, this week was Exxon's uh, 15th, the 15th time that they have denied row. equality to their wow. employees. Um, and, and darn it, I missed that meeting, so I didn't get to learn uh, more about fracking fracking, and how it's great for the environment and um, deep sea exploration. I know more about oil drilling from attending these meetings just to find out, are you going to pass the quality for your game? I just have place. to say, in the years that Aaron and I did that protest outside the Meyerson against the ExxonMobil shareholders meeting, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, the, the other group that's ag against anything, you know, like the pro ExxonMobil, and then there's... Well, those were hired protesters. Right, and yeah. environmentalists and stuff, and then there's us, where we say, you know, vote yes on item number 17 or whatever it is, and uh, but the the other side just, you know, they, they just can't sing. You mm -hmm. know, when you get the LGBT <laughs> group out there and they start singing Janning USA at us and we start singing, you know, they can't beat that. And they always do it for the children. Oil mm -hmm. for the children. Right. And I'm like, that's just disturbing. That's very Wind disturbing. Wind energy yeah. kills birds. Yes. That was, that was one of my favorites. Anyway, so, um, uh, one of the things that um, the resolution did was 
it was there to correct some wording in our non-discrimination ordinance. And this week in Houston, Houston was the last major city in the country that had no non-discrimination ordinance whatsoever, no protections based on race, uh, religion, national origin, nothing. So they wrote a Which very- Which sexual orientation and gender identity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. None of it. None yeah. of it. So they wrote it in uh, an ordinance, and it was very contentious to the point where, um, as of this weekend, Anise Parker, the mayor, has police protection around the clock right now because she's been getting death threats. Our ordinance, when it passed, people spoke for it. People spoke against it. Not very the many council, spoke against it. Not very many did. The council voted. It passed. Yep. Isn't it interesting, the difference, because it, it was even worse in San Antonio last September when they passed theirs. Isn't it interesting, the difference? Um, Adam, do you know anything about the workings of the Houston City Council and, uh, and Houston politics and why ours was completely non-contentious? Now, we had people who were absolutely against it, okay. but it wasn't like we were killing the children by passing <laughs> this. You know, I, I actually, the only person I know from over there and, and even met one time was Anise Parker because she was in the, the wasn't she the in the parade yeah. here in Dallas? And so I don't know that much about Houston politics, uh, so I don't, really can't say much on that. But it, it's just interesting. The it just sounds like they have a really, really, really loud, small, it, vocal it, it minority. Was small. It was small, what but was death the threats vote? are death threats. The, yeah. the vote was 11 to 5. Well, I think the really fascinating thing for me, is, and Aaron hates it, of course, when I do this, but I subscribed to all that right-wing stuff. And, I think that's the, a good thing. <laughs> and the Family Research Council, she goes, oh, it just drives me nuts. I can't take it. And I'm like, well, I want to see what they're telling people, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I've subscribed for years, and sometimes I forward them to you, David. Mm -hmm. And the, the night before the vote on the, the HERO, which is what mm -hmm. they were calling it, the Houston Equal Rights Ordinance, mm -hmm. um, the Family Research Council put out that it was a done deal. It was going to be defeated. You know, they you know, continue to call. You know, the right is going to win, and and all of this stuff. And then there was silence. They never even mentioned it again in their <laughs> subsequent emails. And I thought, well, there you go. Because right. you know, every time there is a, a great, you know, win for us, um, they're they're just silent because they don't know what to say. And they've been losing a lot. <laughs> they have. <laughs> they have really the other one. A lot. This was from the American Family Association this week. They advised everybody if you get mail with a Harvey Milk stamp on it, yes. refuse to take it. Yeah. No, oh, to send it back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, that's insane. Anyway, getting back to uh, to um, equal rights ordinance. One of the things that we did when we passed our ordinance, and this has to do with how old our ordinance is. And May eighth, two thousand two. Yeah, which it, w it was before New York. It was before a bunch of other major cities. We had some language problems, or. Uh, it's become language problems in it. Um, it protects sexual orientation, and then there's a definition of sexual orientation that includes gender identity. Even though the two things are separate things, it, it was kind of we didn't know what to do with it. Adam, does that need to go through city council to correct that wording? It, it does, and that is coming up, not this budget and finance uh, agenda, but the following one. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is get that language changed before we leave for our break. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that uh, we discussed in uh, the task force, is just that language change. And to me, I mean, it's already there. We're just changing, uh, uh, updating the language, right? Because we already right. have our policy, so this is just Not updating change, it. won't change the law at all. No, it's just yeah. updating our policy. And so I don't see that uh, it'll be an issue, but I already talked to Jerry. It's going on. Not this one. I think his is Monday. The next two weeks, it's going on there, and, and I'm trying to get it passed before we go on break. So that'll be another mm -hmm. I think that's that so exciting because one of the things that we don't think about is how it's publicized. So if you show someone the policy and the code, you know, the code in Chapter 46, you know, for the non-discrimination one ordinance that affects everybody who lives in the city, not just employees of the city of Dallas, it's buried in the definition, and so you don't see it. And so when we want people to see, especially those um, who seek those protections based on gender identity and expression, that they're protected, mm -hmm. it's hard to show them. Right. You know, all the mm -hmm. literature about it, everything, it's hard to show because it just says sexual orientation. So I think this is going to be a great thing because, you know, legally they've had that protection all along for the last 12 years, but they're going to see that well, protection. Let's get credit for it. it. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to see that protection. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, that's going to be great. And it's, and other than that, uh, you know, the ordinance stands 
um, on its own. We just need to fix that language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, some of the other inequalities you mentioned: the Family Medical Leave Act. First of all, what is that? FMLA. Yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, well, it's just an act to where if your wife or mother or somebody uh, is sick, you can take time off from work to care for them. Unless so that's pretty gay. much what it is. Unless you're gay. Yes. <laughs> Unless you work for the city of Dallas and you're gay. So <laughs> that's what, well, not anymore. That's right. We fixed that. <laughs> so just up to a month ago, you know, they couldn't do that. You couldn't take off time. I believe you had Teresa O'Donnell on here, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so if her partner would, or wife, well, now it's wife, right? They got married this week. They got this married week. this weekend. So, so yeah, they do. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Good for her. So um, she wouldn't be able, she wouldn't have been able to take time off from her job to care for her partner if, if anything would happen. Well, we wouldn't, no, we don't want anything to happen, but if it would, When her partner gave birth, mm -hmm. she couldn't take off. Right for the birth of her own child. Now she could have, if she was able to legally adopt at the time that the child was born, but it takes months to do that in Texas. Yeah. yeah. So which is why Laurent, you did an out of state <laughs> surrogacy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> because, well, what you went through, it was easier for you to travel to Maryland and have your baby up there than it was. And get the adoption And there. get the adoption done within weeks well yeah well, i mean I, I didn't have to adopt her at all but my husband when she was born the adoption was done immediately for him they wouldn't have to wait for months um yeah it was just done immediately mm -hmm. uh, but here in texas if it were uh, if it would have been allowed at all it would have taken about at least a year mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. so i mean and that's one that's when you can't correct adam it's a state yeah. thing yeah <laughs> <That's not right. laughs> work on it <laughs> I but was you know, going to ask you if you're running for mayor. Are you running for governor? Because that would be one of those. <laughs> I'm not. Come on, <laughs> announce it on it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. My first time on the air. I'm right. running for everything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I do, congratulations to your Aunt Pauline. Thank she you. won yeah. her primary and will be on the ballot for county treasurer. County treasurer in November, yes. So she continues so. her career and a quest to serve. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's a good deal. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so family leave meant that um, if you have a husband or wife, heterosexual husband or wife that person is sick you want to take off the employer pays how much to you zero zero right. yeah. yeah you don't get you don't, paid, you don't get paid. This. it's just leave that you're taking yeah it's just it just off. means you're not going to lose your job yeah yeah you it protects your job you can come back yeah <laughs> so since the company or the city the employer loses nothing and in fact gets to pocket a few dollars why would they be against this why would any employer be against this? Uh, and I'm just asking. I mean, Adam, I know you're shaking was, your head. I was surprised that actually that the city didn't have that, you know, for, for uh, the LGBT community, the employees. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I learned when I got on the task force, and so we knew that we had to correct that. And uh, I'm surprised that more employers don't do it more on a case-by-case -case basis. I was surprised that anybody could do it. I thought the FMLA was a federal thing. Well, it is. It is. But it's a, it's a standard that says that the, you, must, you must allow this, and here are the mm -hmm. standards for it. But most, most employers go above and beyond that. They can offer more. So I thought FMA federal policy. trumped whatever city no, law. No, but federal doesn't include gay people either. It doesn't include your gay partner. It no. does now, your gay uh, husband or wife. Uh, oh, so Same okay. sex partner. Okay. If your spouse is. If you've been legally married somewhere. Okay, see, so yeah, well, I... I yeah, uh, yeah, we, we were. Worse, so but I guess. but a lot of places, a lot of companies have added this, and now the city has. Okay. Because but even so, going back to the using example of me, but even at the time, had I been working for the city of Dallas, I wouldn't, I couldn't have uh, taken off. No. And, no. And uh, for care for Danny. No. No. So to speak. No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Even though we were already married. Right. Right. Not but you can now because of the Windsor. Yeah. Now that's interesting yeah. because when I was working for the state of Texas, mm -hmm. I did. So really? this, so the state of Texas. <laughs> but see, that might have been a case by case. It might have been your manager. <laughs> so, so the state of Texas. <laughs> that that's a case of somebody. I guess so. You mean the state of Texas was well, better to work for than the city of Dallas? <laughs> But wow. you know, and marriage equality in Texas is not going to be a panacea for us at all. I mean, we have to remember that we're in a state where the United States Supreme Court ruled unconstitutional 
the homosexual conduct law, section 2106, in 2003. Now that's been 11 years, and they still print it in the penal code with a little tiny right. font that says it's yeah. unconstitutional. So this is the and and in spite of bills coming up in every legislative session to just take it out, just clean it up, don't keep reprinting it. It's a waste of ink. Right. You know, it's not even enforceable. And they won't take it out. So things like employment, public accommodations, all of those things that we've, you know, kind of addressed um, uh, locally and then through the legislative piece of the resolution, mm -hmm. those still have to have work. <laughs> yeah. We need to take a break. You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. We'll be back with more right after this. You are listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Canawin thanks you for your pledge to our recent pledge drive. Now is the time to make your pledge count. Be sure to send it to Canawin, 5353 Maple Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75235. If you missed our pledge drive, you can still support community radio by donating online at knwin.org. Your pledge only counts if you pay it. Canawin, 5353 Maple Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75235. Be sure to include the name of the show you're supporting. For questions about the pledge drive, 214-828-9500, extension 234. Center Dallas, you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON-FM. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet. I'm here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and with Leron Landis. And our guest is Adam Madrano. Uh, he's tearing apart the studio right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was my phone. I tear my phone. Uh, um, <laughs> Adam is first term city council person next year uh, are elections so you're either up for election or running for mayor next year um, I'm running for re-election to represent the district and he announced two. it here <laughs> <laughs> so I did get an announcement out of you. yes um, and gee, do you think you think Adam likes a local sports team I don't know he's like covered in Dallas <laughs> Mavericks really <laughs> he really is it's his district it is I'm my district. This is district. my city. I love my city. I love my teams. Um, big sports fan, basketball, and I also love horror movies. I got to meet Freddy Krueger, Robert England, mm -hmm. when the Comic Con was here. That was oh. amazing. Oh yeah. wow! He cool. signed my glove. I'm a okay. Y'all gonna find out more stuff. I have a real Freddy Krueger glove, and he signed it for me. So wow! Yeah. That's awesome. That's it was cool. awesome. Hmm. That's cool. So that's that's. But yeah, cool. I'm a Mavericks guy. So <laughs> so how did you save a tree in Deep Ellum? Oh, okay, so, uh, you know that Elm Street is being redone, there's a lot of stuff going on in Deep Elm, y'all need to try out Pecan Lodge open, and you mm -hmm. go try it out, and I heard the lines aren't as long as they've been at the farmer's market, mm -hmm. it's the restaurant now, so try that out. Um, one of the, my constituents, I guess, business owner at the Mozzarella Company, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Oh, yeah. So, uh, um, Paula, she called my office and was worried about the tree that she planted years ago, which probably shouldn't have been planted where she planted it years ago, but uh, you know, with the city, you know, we're coming by, we're trying to improve the streets. The, the engineer and I think even the arborist went out there and said they were gonna have to chop the tree down. And so um, she calls my office and she's like, "You gotta help me." You know, this is, and I think the newspaper made a big deal about it. They tried to write a story, I guess, negative about me of, because I was trying to help constituents. And uh, to me, I, that's my job. Right. You know, anybody that calls my office gets treated equally. And so they try to make it as, like, she was a well-known person in the community. Actually, I didn't know the lady. Mm -hmm. now, She's Pauline been on Food Network and all. And so, I mean, so probably a few people know her. I didn't know her. As, honestly, I didn't know her. My friends that owned the, the pizza place across the street, Mama Mia's, you know, I grew up with them. I didn't, you know, I'm always there, and I, knew, I saw the place, but I never knew the lady. Mm -hmm. And so, like, well, don't you think you're doing paying favoritism because, you know, she's a woman? I said, I really didn't know the lady until she called my office. So, if you're saying that I'm giving special treatment, then it's special treatment to everyone that calls my office because we treat everybody the same. And so, the folks in Deep Ellum were supporting her. You know, they, there was, she said, if any cost extra or anything, I'll pay for it. Just try to save my tree. Right. Why wouldn't we try to save a tree? Right. All She's I did, not I trying staff, to cost the city anything. I told right. staff, is there any way we can save the tree? And, and one of the reasons I got upset was because staff went to the, talk to the newspaper without me knowing and saying, well, we heard orders from Madrano. That's not the kind of person I am. If you know that, wow. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, can we save this tree? I didn't give anybody an order or 
change the plans or do anything like that. And so th they try to flip it on me. But so when that happened, I'm like, you know what? We're saving that tree. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were able to save the tree. You know, we're still going to have to do some trimming. And they changed the plans a little bit uh, to accommodate the tree, uh, which was everybody in Deep Elm was fine with. Where you know. is this tree? It's right at Elm. And, oh, I don't know the name of that street. It's right before, you know where Pepe and Mitos is? Mm -hmm. Or local? Mm -hmm. Right next to it. Oh, okay. And, right and, it's, and it's it's between a couple of lanes of traffic right in the middle of the street? <laughs> it's not in the middle of the street. It's on the sidewalk. And so... Um, it's it, a mature tree, though. It's a mature tree. And, I mean, we saved it. You know, you didn't have to cut it. You didn't have to cut it. They were saying, well, it's going to die in so many years. And we'll let it die in so many years, and we can change it. We can change the plans or whatever. Do, fix so that. All trees and she died. even said, the, miss, she said that she would pay for that. You mm -hmm. know, she's, I just want to save this tree. Don't so all we trees were able to die eventually, though? Yeah, I know. Well, not sequoias in California. They've well, been around for centuries. Mm -hmm. So we ended up saving the tree. Awesome. So that was good. And well, the environment like thanks it. you. I haven't gone to take a picture in front of it, but she wanted me to come over. She went out of town for a month, so mm. she might be calling me. She wanted me to take a picture with her mm. by the tree. I'm like, okay, you I'll take it. a picture. Yeah, I'm going to hug it. it. <laughs> 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 or a picture of you sitting up in the tree so that they can't it's cut high, it down. It's a high tree. It's really, I mean, it, it needs to, it'll be trimmed a little bit, and hopefully it'll survive that because it is in the power lines and it's, it's, it's in the way. So, But, you know, we'll figure out, they figure out a way to mm. take care of it. Which awesome. brings up more of those power lines need to be out of the way. They need to be underground. That's what everybody's. <laughs> they there do. You go. <laughs> they do. And that way, during every time it rains, the power wouldn't go out. Um, this seems to be your new bailiwick. You know, when <laughs> for years and years we were talking about, you know, he, he was talking about, David was talking about New York's taxes. So in this, you know, the state of New York, because you're from New York and you're talking taxes, and I, on the air, begged him not to talk about it because listeners, it's taxes, it's boring, and damn if we didn't have the big case at the United States Supreme Court was over taxes, taxes. in New York, mm -hmm. Windsor. So, I can't say too much now, but because yeah. I'm always right. <laughs> it may take me years to prove it to you, Patty, but just say it. And now the power lines under the, under the ground, do. you know, they it's do. this new thing. That neighborhood would be so much more walkable without those power lines. Cedar Springs also. We don't have balloons in our um, pride parade because of the, the power, power lines. lines. Yep. Otherwise, we'd have Bullwinkle. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I want Rocky, but go okay, ahead. Okay, no. whatever. Um, no. We were talking about the <laughs> resolution that passed. Um, one of the things that it did was it just instructed staff to look for things that weren't equal and do what they could to fix those things. Some things could just be done administratively, some things had to go to city council. So one of the things that um, w when FMLA passed, family leave so that um, a gay person can take off for their partner just like a straight person can take off for their partner, I said, oh, okay, now if what if the person dies? Is there bereavement leave? And whoever I asked said, ooh, <laughs> have you heard anything about that being fixed? No, we, ha we haven't. Uh uh. Well, you know, in fact, um, w back when, when the elections were taking place, mm -hmm. um, the DGLA PAC was asking candidates about bereavement, and one of the things, and it's for several years now, and one of the things that kept coming back to us from incumbents and such was that that's a call that most managers make when an employee, like, for example, what, um, you know, Aaron's mom recently passed away, and um, my job let me take off for that. And they, was, you know, they were very, very supportive mm -hmm. because it's my my mother-in-law, you know. And so, um, of course, Aaron was able to take off, but bereavement leave for me, you know. And um, and we want that to be for the city employees too. And it's not officially anywhere, mm -hmm. um, but apparently it is being honored. Through you know throughout the city, they've not had any complaints, and it's been given obviously, and granted by managers. So you know it would be good. It would be good to have it in writing. Uh, and, and it's an easier one to give off. You're usually taking one or two days. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then so in the industry weeks, standards, Patty. like three. Yeah, you, you know. took weeks. <laughs> <laughs> weeks. I didn't take weeks. <laughs> um, but that's um, an important one, mm -hmm. though. I mean, it's it, a, is. it, it is. It is. It is an important one. Um, and I was a city employee, and, and I know yeah. that I've, when someone passed away, you know, close to me, I was able to take off. And my manager was like, "Go ahead and mm -hmm. take," you know. 
Well, yeah. And most would. That's not yeah, the reason for a yeah. policy like no. that. The but reason for a policy like that is if you're working for somebody like Patty. He's going to deny you your right to do that, right? Um, this month is Pride Month. Today's June 1st, so this is the beginning of Pride Month. Um, City Hall and the task force do a number of events mm -hmm. for, uh, for Pride Month. Um, one of the ones that's become a tradition is Pride at City Hall. Right. That one was originally scheduled June 4th. It's moved to June 11th. Yes, we moved it to June 11th. We might still do something on the 4th. Oh, okay. But as far as the official kickoff, we're going to do the 11th. Okay, so um, tell me what that is going to be. There's... Um, Actually, this is going to be the first annual. I think we're giving out a Spirit of Equality Awards, and we're going to give them for leadership, allies, and a community award. So that's the first time we've done that. Right. Has so it been announced too? No. No, no, okay. no. We're, we're going to announce it that day, so it's mm -hmm. a surprise. So those people, I'm sure those people are listening. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but also we have, so it's 11th is going to be that day, that, that, and then we'll also place the flag. We'll place the flag at the beginning of the month. And... Um, we're also going to have an on the twentieth LGBTQ prom. I know we're going to we'll give you all the rest of the information. We're, we're working through all those. The twenty first is going to be uh, LGBT Family Day at our water park, which is Bahama Beach Water Park. So I didn't even know day. the city owned a water yeah, park. Yeah, we do. I was there the other day. Yeah, and I, I went knew. on the slides and everything. It's the tenth anniversary. Yeah, this one this I'm is excited the 10th about. Anniversary Do you know? I knew that there was that park. Bahama Beach was there because it was right down the street from where I used to live. I didn't know that was a city facility. Did the city take over a? It it, it was first run by someone else, mm -hmm. and then they just like I guess they lost money, and gave us the keys, yeah. and actually my supervisor, who was my supervisor at the time, Robin Steinschneider, took over Aquatics, and so she's been or her staff has been running. It's been successful, and today this is the tenth year uh, anniversary of it. So, so it just comes under parks. It's under parks. Oh, okay. it's under parks. And then there's also a skating. We rink. have a skating rink. The city of Delson's oh. a skating. Southern rink. Skates. Where? Mm -hmm. It's over there, right near um, A. Maciel Smith High School. So what is I don't know that, I forgot the name of the street, mm. but it's a uh, it's called Southern Skates uh, Roller Rink. It's awesome. We're going to use it later on this year for a back to school event for LGBT community. That is great. That's exciting. <laughs> um, there's also <laughs> San Dallas Skates. Zoo Family <laughs> Day, <laughs> and there's also a zoo, and that's that right now is, is scheduled for the uh, 25th, and then also uh, Give Back Day at the Stew Pot is the 28th, and so. Uh, the task force has uh, working on those and so I want to thank the task force for all their work okay if somebody wants to participate in most of these uh, like the June 11th event the Pride at City Hall just show up do you know what time 11 30 or noon uh, at, on uh, the 11th yeah it'll be at noon so at it'll noon. be between our, our, our okay council break I, I knew it was between the, mm -hmm. the meetings between but 12 I and sure. 1 usually 12 that's okay, so, break. so that one uh, you can just show up at City Hall anyone can Absolutely. show up um, you park, if you've never been to City Hall, you just park behind City Hall. There are meters there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not expensive meters either. And, and if you want to take the dart rail, you can get off at the uh, convention center stop and walk over. It's like mm -hmm. two yep. blocks. Mm -hmm. You can be right there. And do you need volunteers for some of the other events? Well, the uh, stew pot, especially. Yes, it's, yeah, yes, we do. So if you want to, you can contact my office uh, or um, the task force or... or your office is probably the easiest. What yeah, is the number? It's 214-670-4048. And that's, that's my office number. And just talk. tell them that you want to volunteer. Yeah, volunteer for any one, whichever one of the events. At one of the events, okay. We'll uh, send out... Um, I guess we can give you something to announce next week too. Is it? Yeah, I mean every week. Yeah, so we can give we'll you something to announce it that. and do that. And then, of course, it'll go out on Facebook and Twitter and right. every other possible. Maybe The Voice, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, it'll be uh, already was with wrong information. There you go. Right. Yeah, uh, because they changed it. Yeah, we, yes. we changed it. Um, the, these pride events have been going on several years. Um, how did that get going? Was that a task force thing, Patty? It was a task force thing, and you know, of course, there's a there are a jillion things going on during the month of June, and then again in September, kind of locally, lots of organizations. I mean, last week we had Razzle Dazzle on the show, and we we're talking about their events for Pride. Um, but several years ago, um, the task force decided that we should be doing something as part of the city of Dallas mm -hmm. to showcase some of the you know venues and the policies and the welcome. 
um, embrace that we get from the city of Dallas. And so it, I can't tell you um, how many of us stood with uh, tears welling up in our eyes when we saw the rainbow flag hanging in the main lobby of Dallas City Hall. It was, it was just um, really moving. And that was Mary Soom. Yes. Um, former city manager, Mary Soom. You know, we had, you know, a rainbow cake, and we were in the flag room, and the mayor spoke, and, you know, it's just lots of lots of good stuff. And so we, we've continued that tradition. We want it to become one of those that where we can't let it go by and not have some, mm -hmm. you know, June Pride events from the city. Um, and so in that partnership that the task force really is between the LGBT community and the city of Dallas, um, we continue to add things and learn about city facilities we didn't know about. <laughs> right, right. There's that's always some like about. hidden treasures in Dallas yeah, that you yeah. don't know about and yeah. you found about and you're like, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And it's there mm -hmm. and it's uh, very affordable and, you know, and certainly some, uh, you know, a treasure like the zoo. I mean, that's, and people who went last year at the, the June Pride Zoo event had a blast and their kids went. We have some library events coming up. Yeah, library up. events coming up. And uh, so we'll get those all I'll publish. And as we found out this year with a couple of our guests, we actually have some gay librarians. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> We're everywhere. No. Uh -huh. You don't say. Yep, we do. Um, okay, so um, uh, June 25th is the uh, Dallas Zoo Family Day. Uh, June 28th is Get Back Day. Uh, what are they going to be doing at the Stew Pot, do you know? I think they're going to. Uh, I think sir, I don't, she said serving uh, food or, or whichever, whatever I guess the stew pot needs from us that day. We'll do. So I think that's what. And what was interesting last year is we had kind of a limited number. They said they needed like uh, twelve people yeah. or something, and all kinds of people from companies around Dallas also signed up and showed up and we had way more people than, we, <laughs> than they needed but there was always something for them to do. So to do it's a great way to give back to the community and to do so as a part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. Adam, we're out of time. I want to thank you for coming on Adam's first time on the Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really yeah, enjoyed it. Please come back. Let's city council I'll come back. Yes, absolutely. I, we hope you'll yeah. come back. I come will. Back I'll often. come back. Yeah. You uh, know, uh, and Philip Kingston and Scott Griggs come Quite a lot. Both have yes. been on several But times. you know, Adam was actually on the show earlier when we had Teresa O'Donnell on. You guys called we in. We called in from oh, our from conference from, from, from DC. Washington, D.C. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's sort of an appearance on Lambda Weekly. Yeah. So this would be your second one. There you go. Okay. And um, <laughs> Adam wants everybody to know he could be running for re-election or maybe running for mayor next year. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Lambda Weekly. Have Thank a good week. We'll Thank be you. back <laughs> next week. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.